So this is Mark at Skywagon University, and today John Spratz very kindly brought his uh, Raven, his Rans S20 Raven down for us to look at. Built by him, and we're going to walk around it and have a look at all its features. John, thanks very much for bringing it down. Glad to. So John, i got to be 100% honest with you, I know nothing about Ranses. So you know a lot about Ranses, kind of we're relying on you for a lot of information. Just give us like a a background overview of the year, the engine, just everything about it. Just a quick one, and then we'll get into some detail with some uh, more specifics. Okay, the uh, S20 Raven came out in uh, 2014. We saw it at the Sebring uh, uh, Expo in Florida and decided that was our going to be our project. Now, before the S20, they had an S7S, the same wing, but it was four and aft seating. Well, a lot of people wanted side-by-side -side seating, so Rands came up with this fuselage, which is wider. And these and are 46 it, inches wide, I read. Yes, 46 inches wide at the elbow because is, the, the that's doors... That's wider than a 172. Bow out, yeah. yeah. So it's very roomy. You've got a good cargo compartment. It's uh, eight, 80 pounds. So the wife and I, full fuel and full cargo, and we'll still 50 pounds under maximum gross weight. Um, and the max gross weight is the 1320 of, of light sport experiment. Well, the light sport is 1320. If it has wheels, if it has floats, it's 1430. The, uh, they say they built it to 1500 pounds. So being uh, a, an experimental version of this, I set the limit at 1430 because I knew that was a safe limit. Okay. So we're still full, with full of everything, we're still 50 pounds under that weight. Excellent. And the engine in it? The engine, uh, the airplane was designed for the 912 100 horse. Uh, uh, this one is a 914 and it's turbocharged. So Rotax. it has 115, yes, it has 115 horsepower. Okay. And in addition to that, it has a constant speed adjustable propeller. This one will also feather so that it will increase my glide ratio up to 10, point, uh, 10 to 1 glide ratio instead of the normal. Uh, 8.5 to 1. So you get a better glide ratio when the propeller is feathered. And that propeller, which I hope you'll show us now, is sure. um, electric, manually controlled, or automatic. It is. You have an automatic mode and also a manual mode. And this is what it looks like if it's feathered. It usually takes about 13 seconds to go from full fine to full feather. And when it's feathered, it's really feathered. It's 90 right. degrees. Much less drag and it increases your glide ratio. And uh, it gets about 600 feet a minute at 60 knots. Oh, wow, okay. Excellent. A modern computerized version of the old beach electric concept. Something like that, yes. Yeah. And you can also do it manually. So you can set a range, a parameter range to have it be high and low for a, for a situation? You can. For example, on a descent, uh, normally I pull the throttle back and then I set the RPMs. Instead of 5,000 RPM for cruise, I'll set it down to say 4,300 RPM and it really quiets everything down. Everything gets real smooth. And you can never over rev it? No. Yeah. The, the computer will keep it from over revving. And that's full fine. Yes, it is. So you said we built it. Tell yes, us a little the, bit about the Yes, the wife build. and I took uh, 2,700 of our hours to build this, and uh, we're enjoying every minute of it now. The kit, when we ordered it uh, in 2014, was not completely ready. They did not have the fuselage ready then, so they sent us the wing kit. And the wing has, is all aluminum. It's a three inch spar in the leading edge, a two inch spar in the back. And then all of the ribs are also aluminum uh, preformed. So the, the aluminum goes back to about there. Well, uh, the aluminum on the top goes back to about there, but there's nothing on the bottom, oh, okay. it's just fabric, yes. Okay. There's uh, a leading edge wrap that right. uh, helps with the uh, shape of the uh, wing here. This one is a uh, Dynon uh, pitot tube, but it also measures down here the angle of attack. So the static port on this airplane is back here on the tail, so that I can get the static, the pitot tube, the angle of attack, and also the static uh, for the Dynon. The uh, the wingtip was our design. Yeah. Uh, the, the kit came with a 
big fiberglass piece that is screwed on and we didn't want to do that so we, we designed our own uh, wingtip design. Fabric right to the tip. Yes, it's all fabric. The uh, ailerons here uh, are very light on the control because they have uh, their, they're hinged way back here so on the ailerons it's really light on the control. So that's a Fry's aileron. Fry's aileron I think yeah. is the term they use, yes. And flaps, how many um, stages of flaps? Well, we can get normally uh, 10 degrees, uh, 20 degrees, 30 degrees, and 40 degrees of flap, but since we have electric flaps on this one, we can set any flap setting we want. So the, the, the original Ravens would have been manual flaps? Yes, manual flaps, like okay. a, a parking brake uh, lever, something like okay. that, right. And tell us a little bit more about these uh, vents on the gas caps. Uh, the wing tanks up here, you have 13 gallons on each side, and the kit came with a probe with a hole in front to vent the air uh, in the wing tank. Well, what I found was that it would get dirt, bugs, and water in there, so we put this little cap over it with a way of the air coming up and into the top of the vent, but that lets the dirt and, and bugs go around it. Which brings me nicely around to your aeronautical experience and how you can be so like good at all this stuff. What's your history with the aerodynamics? I started building model airplanes when I was 12. Uh, my father was in the Air Force, I was in the Air Force, and I also worked for the airlines. So we get a lot of uh, training on systems and how they work, how they're supposed to work, and what happens when they don't work. Right. So I tried to do everything that we could to make it safe because it's a backcountry airplane and we don't want to get stuck out in the backcountry right. with a broken so airplane. What did you fly in the Air Force? I flew C-130s and KC-135s air refueling tankers. Okay. Yeah. So you weren't the guy in the back? No. Tell me that joke. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, the boom operators is the guy on the KC-135 that controls the boom as the receiver comes up. And they always said that they had the best job in the Air Force. They had three college-trained officers to carry them to their job, and all they had to do is lay on their stomach and pass gas. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Uh, here's the uh, static port we were talking about here. Uh, there's one on each side so that if you're slipping or something, it'll, it'll average the uh, static. Oh, okay. So that's essential that's... for the altitude hold portion of the autopilot. Yes. Which a lot of light sport experimental planes don't have, but this one, as we'll see later, is incredibly well equipped inside. Um, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It has a lot better uh, avionics than some of the airplanes I flew in the Air Force. Oh, I bet. I mean, the KC-10, how old is that? Oh, the KC-135, I think the first one was built in uh, the 1955, 56. Yeah. Um, so, still yeah, flying. they've come a long way these days. Yeah. But they're still flying now, but with upgraded engines and avionics and, and all that. So. Yeah. Same airframe. Yep. Uh, the fuselage is all 4130 steel welded. It's very strong and sturdy. Uh, same for the horizontal stabilizer in the elevator and the rudder but all fabric uh, controlled except for That's a, uh, covered. a steerable tailwheel. It is a steerable tailwheel. Uh, it'll steer as long as, uh, when you want to do a tight turn, you go full rudder and touch a little brake and it'll spin right around one of the main gears. Once you get out of that, you can go straight again. And the trim tab, aluminum? Uh, the trim tab is aluminum and it's controllable from the stick, so for elevator trim. The uh, rudder and aileron did not have trim on this because I have a three-axis autopilot so that the autopilot will maintain wings level and uh, keep the ball in the center. And you're damped. Yes. Yeah. So here we are inside. First thing you'll notice is one stick in the middle. What happened there? Well, the first time we sat in one of these that we saw it, we had to crawl over a stick and we both decided we don't want to crawl over a stick. And it was this big? It was, this is actually one of the two sticks that comes with the kit. So what we did was we got rid of the two sticks and the bar that connects them and connected this one stick to the push rod that goes all the way back to the elevator. So we saved some weight and made it easier to get in and out of the airplane. Two throttles. Kept. Yes. Well, that requires if I want to sit in one seat or the other that I have a throttle on both sides. So what I did was I made a two throttle situation here. So I can fly it from either side. You can 
I normally fly in the left seat with the right hand, but somebody can sit in the right seat and fly with the left hand also. Excellent. And then the panel is exceptional. That's a Dynon. What's the model of that? It's Skyview. a Dynon uh, Skyview Touch. Uh, they have an upgraded version of that. It's basically the same size, but it has a special little panel down here. So then in the bumpy air, you can uh, hold on and punch the correct button. Uh, for me, my panel allows me to just hold my hand here and punch the right button anyway. But it's basically the same operation that the Dynon has uh, right now. You have a, a pilot's display, you have a map display, and an engine display. And all of these things can be adjusted. For example, if you want to look at everything on the engine, you can do that. Or if you want a bigger map, you can turn off the engine and get a bigger map. And synthetic vision. And synthetic vision also. Uh, that's uh, not too many mountains here, but if we turned it toward the uh, east, you'd see the Sierras up there. So I don't see a master switch anywhere. John, what's the story with that? Well, a master switch uh, basically is a battery switch. It turns the battery power on to power everything up until the engine starts up and the alternator can provide power. So what I did was I have actually two batteries using a marine battery switch, which is uh, very good because the marine uh, battery switch and electrical parts are designed for corrosion to, to prevent it. And so I can select either a one battery, a two battery, or both batteries together. And that powers the airplane until the engine starts up and the alternator takes over. So that's the master switch and battery selector and everything. All yes, it is. Yeah. And another thing down here between the rudder pedals, what's that little servo there with these cables connected? It's a three axis autopilot and that axis is the yaw axis. So when uh, the autopilot senses that you have some yaw, it will correct it and make the corrections with the rudder pedals to always keep the ball in the center. Very advanced. I like to cross my uh, arms and look at the scenery while the autopilot flies along. <laughs> yeah. And with this equipment in it, that's easily done. Yeah. Um, where do you keep all the electronic wizardry? Well, most of it is either behind the panel or underneath the forward cargo compartment. The battery power is uh, coming from the bottom of the uh, cargo compartment through the battery switch and then to the fuses here that we have for the avionics bus and the equipment bus. The equipment bus has things like uh, the taxi lights, uh, USB charger, the two fuel pumps for the 914. The avionics bus, of course, co covers everything here for the avionics, the ELT, uh, pitch and roll, the yaw servo. Everything labeled. Everything else, yes. And uh, th since this is a backcountry airplane, we didn't want to have a uh, circuit breaker break or, or go out of uh, sorts, so we got fuses, because when a fuse fails, it's done its job. Rather than a circuit breaker, where you just push it back in and yes. it does it again. That's yeah. correct. And under that one, too, there's more. Right. We have some more on this side. Uh, this is the hot battery bus. There's a hot battery bus and a main bus, and this one has just got three things on it. There's also the pitch servo and the roll servo connected down here. This is an exceptionally nice plane and panel, John. I think we should probably go and fly it. I think so too. Let's go. Fuel pressure. Sorry. Okay, that's all. Big. And suit yourself on this. You can yeah. you can twist it one way or the other, pull it oh, in perfect. or whatever. So whatever's good for you. Yeah, I like it when a, an experimental manufacturer makes a a usably large cabin. Yeah. Yeah, that's good that they did that. Three remarks. Density altitude three thousand seven hundred. Yeah, I do that in Cetabrias or Cubs. Dangle from the ceiling to see yeah. over the front when you're going up a hill. Yep. Seven, four, one, Zulu, weather, wind, two, one, zero, at five. Oh, it's so quiet for Rotex. Well, the 914s have a muffler. 
And the nine twelves, they use whatever the manufacturer gives them. Uh, okay. So all of our checklists are uh, in here. For example, the pre-flight, we've already walked around it today. Exterior, our battery switches, uh, all buses and fuses are checked. The doors, uh, flight, I think your altitude is, what, 3,400 here? That's all we're going to go to. And I could set the higher altitude if I wanted. Uh, wing tank, both fuel valves are on. Engine fuel valve is on down here. And the prop is going to be takeoff mode in the auto mode. So it'll go for 5,750 RPM up here. Uh, the engine start we've already done. The panel switches are all set up. I'll turn the strobes on now. Uh, for the takeoff, we want two fuel pumps, this one and this one, and we want two ignitions all on. Okay. Um, the run up, we, I usually run it up to 3,800 RPM. And turn off one. And then the next one. And then we do a prop check to make sure that both the auto mode and the manual mode work. So we go to manual, go to course, and the RPM will slow down. Then we go back to auto, and then the little red light comes on, and then it goes off when it's fine. Perfect. And that's all set up for takeoff. So we got ignition on, there's the aux fuel pump on. What it will do is, there's a pressure switch there that I put on. If this one fails, uh, then that one comes on automatically and you get a light. But for takeoff, we'll have them both on. Because I don't want to be switching switches taking off. And you use 10 degrees of flaps? I takeoff? use uh, 10 degrees of flaps for takeoff, yeah. It'll take off in any flap setting, really. Yeah. So that one's all good. Taxi, we taxied out. And we're, I don't see anybody in a pattern yet, but we'll be listening. 28, 22.8. Engine run up, we just did. Flaps and trim are set. And ready for takeoff. So, for takeoff, we got our strobes on, flaps are 10, uh, fuel pumps are both on. And we got uh, takeoff and auto mode set up. So, we'll lift, the airplane will lift off at about 45 or 50 knots. And I'll go ahead and use the uh, maximum rate of climb, which will be uh, 65 knots as we climb out. Climb power would be about 40 inches here on the manifold pressure and 5,800 or less on the RPM. Okay. And I'm ready if you are, sir. I'm ready. Okay, seat belts right. and shoulder harnesses. Yep. Clarksville traffic, Raven 6 H Charlie Julia taking off runway 23, standing in the pattern. Is that what you call it, a Raven? Yeah, do it's the S20 Raven. Do the controllers know that? Yes, they do. How Some of them do. They keep confusing me with a, uh, a Cirrus, which is a... This one is a Ro Romeo Sierra. The Cirrus is our Sierra Romeo. Oh. And they think <laughs> I'm di dyslexic. Okay, uh. so here we go. Oh, you might want to close that somewhat. That didn't take long. That's the idea. Notice we got 40 inches and 57.40 on the RPM. Yeah, and the synthetic vision. Yeah, and we're climbing at about 1,300 feet a minute. Okay, I'm going to pull back the power to 35 inches and go to climb RPM, and it'll now go to about 5,500 RPM. And with the climb power at 65 knots or so, we're still getting about 700, 800 feet a minute. With two of us in it and gas. Yeah. So we were a thousand feet above the runway at the end when we climbed off of the, over the end of the departure end. Uh, uh, let's see here. Yeah. 
And then once we get into the pattern, I usually pull it back to about 22 inches or so. Is it only the turbo has a manifold pressure gauge? Because I've never seen a manifold pressure in a Rotax. Yep. Uh, you don't need them really on the normally aspirated engines. And then we don't need that ox pump anymore, so we'll be using a single one. Right at bicycle traffic, Raven 6H, how did you lay it left down on my uh, 2 3. Now, did you want to do uh, full stop? Yeah. Okay. And then, uh, if you want to do a little stick time on it, you're welcome to see what it feels like. But you see, it's a very stable airplane. The autopilot's not on. That's it, just. That's it. If I put the autopilot on, it says its air airspeed is too low. There it goes. And this level button, I told the wife, if I pass out, hit the level button, because it'll go straight and level. <laughs> get on level, get on the radio. Yeah, right. So that's usually, amazing. you notice the little yellow bar here. If it's on the runway, that's about a good displacement for this airplane anyway, okay. or the way that I fly it. So, uh, right about the end of the runway there, I'll usually push it back to almost idle and go for the flaps. We'll use flaps 20. And that's controlled right here? Yep. So there's flaps 20 Altitude. right there. That's Bitch and Betty talking to us. I usually like to have about 60, 62 knots. And over the numbers, I'll slow to 52 and then normal flare and landing. Perfect. Flashable traffic, Raven 6 8 Charlie Juliet turning final, runway 23, full stop. Looks like an aircraft carrier, doesn't it? It does. It looks shorter than it is, too, because it's slightly uphill. Yeah. It's actually 3,800 feet long. So your airport is like mine, we always get these gusts and I usually tend to pull the power back when I get over the runway. Yeah. Because you yeah. can lose, you know, five, ten knots real quick. And on yours, all you got to do is fly straight and level and you'll end up running into the runway. And the runway comes up to meet you. <laughs> <laughs> so what speed are we doing now? About 52 right here. 52 knots. You can see the AOA starting to chirp, see? And that's the spring landing gear, right there. Yeah. That was excellent. The main thing that hits me, being first time Rand's uh, passenger, is smoothness and size. It's very smooth, very stable, and it's big. Yeah, you don't feel you know, compressed yeah. into the cockpit. I mean, I got the thing reclining back, I got room behind me. We can taxi up. To the okay. front again. Fuel pressure. The taxi up to your office. Yeah. By that blue airplane. Yeah. So what I do, uh, you know, prevent the hot start problems. I turn the all fuel off right now. So I got zero fuel going to the carbs. We're just burning whatever's in the carbs right now. You just sort of time it like 30 seconds before shutdown. Yeah, a little bit further than what we just did because uh, when I back in Minden, I have a longer taxi to parking, but oh. I'll just let it run until it quits at idle speed. I'll open my window here for a little air. They say you can fly these things with the windows open, but I'm not doing that. There's a big curve to fly with them open. Yeah. See, that was just about the perfect time you could feel it wants to quit right now. Engine monitor. And Bitch and Betty is talking to us. She's telling us about the engine and it was us that shut it down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was great. I'm oh, glad you had a good time. I saw this on Saturday when you were here at the pancake breakfast, and then Don oh. met you, and I went, oh, I saw that plane. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so, uh, I don't know, I didn't explain all this stuff to you, but uh, the screen, uh, this has everything that I really need. The only thing that is not on here is the cylinder barrel temperatures which I can get by doing that. So here's, these are the cylinder barrel temperatures, one and three on that side and two and four on that side. 
I set it up the way I'd be looking at it if I was looking over oh, yeah. the panel. And uh, then the coolant. The coolant is uh, what they measure. They don't measure the cylinder head metal temperature anymore. They go for the coolant under the uh, idea that if the coolant's only 206, well, then the metal's going to be about that, that temperature anyway. And this this will tell you if you're getting close to the point where you might be boiling the coolant. This uses a 50-50 uh, distilled water and dex cool. How much um, quantity? Pardon me? And what quantity of coolant? A gallon? Oh, boy. About that, yeah, in the whole system. There's not a lot. How long have you got? If it blew a hose and the water came out, how long have you got? Well, uh, they say that you can throttle back and the airflow over the cylinder barrels, because there's no head gasket between the cylinder head and the barrel, that you can get to where you're going to go without the engine quitting or seizing. Just at low power? At low, lower power, yeah. And with, with this one, with the, where I can control the RPM anyway with the, the pitch, then that's going to be better. And then uh, what else we got? You saw these two, the manifold pressure and the RPM. Uh, voltage. Uh, this is the voltage output of the alternator. This is the, alter the voltage that the bus is actually seeing, which is good. You don't want any more than two-tenths of a, vo a volt drop between what the alternator is putting out and what the avionics are uh, seeing. Okay. So that means I did good on the wiring. So John, that was epic. Thanks very much for the, looking around the plane and that flight, um, bringing it over from Minden. Uh, it's an excellent plane, incredibly well equipped. And I've always said that a, a mechanically sympathetic person who understands a machine makes a better pilot than operating it than if you don't understand the systems. Well, you built this thing from scratch, and you must be an excellent pilot. I try. <laughs> Thanks very much. You bet. Mark from Skywagons University, looking at this uh, S20 Raven. Subscribe on the little link here and click on the little bell, get a, uh, notifications of other videos. We're going to do a lot of these. We've already done a lot of these. And if you've got an interesting plane like John's, probably not as interesting, we don't know yet, give us a call or uh, email me and we'll see if we can set up talking about it.